The conscious direction of my will in the form of the timely application of knowledge, which is wisdom, in order to achieve effectual change in my life and in the world around me. Oh my, this is my last video. <laughs> I'm going to put day 12 and 13 together. If you're unaware of this tag, this is the 13 nights of Samhain. There's a bunch of us doing it. It's super fun. And um, you can find all sorts of answers on Samhain and how magical practitioners are celebrating this incredibly liminal time of the year. And I wanna hear how you're celebrating too. So do please share down below. If you don't know me, I'm Hexa. I live in the Pacific Northwest of the United States in a little town in Oregon <laughs> on an organic farm. And I just try to share with you my personal experience and my witchy life. If you stick around long enough, you're gonna see ups and downs. I am a hard on my sleeve type person and I'm very honest. And that's what I am here to share with you is just how my practice is expanding and contracting, how I'm falling and picking myself back up and the magic that I'm creating in my life here day by day. So day 12 is the lessons, skills, and experiences that I've gained over the last Samhain to Samhain year, and then my aspirations for the coming Samhain to Samhain year. This was a great magical year for me, honestly. I have grown so much and learned so much. I took Christopher Hughes's course with the Anglesey Order of Druidry and I am now a, an initiate. I have now initiated into that order. I've worked a little bit on my Obod course. If you don't know, this is these are both Druidry courses. I've worked a little bit on that, but I really committed to diving into the mysteries of the Mabinogion, which is the Welsh, uh, the Welsh mythos and uh, their oral tradition and then the magic that goes along with that. And that course was so cool to be a part of. Um, I learned a lot about myself, what I want to do with my magical practice and what I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna talk about that in a second. If you are thinking about taking classes with someone, I would tell you, start small. This was a year long commitment for me. It was the biggest course I'd ever taken. And I definitely struggled about three quarters of the way through, but it was good for me to hit that threshold point and to press through and to really grow through some of the reservations that I had. Whenever you do a magical course of study, even if it's your own personal magical course of study, you just come up against yourself. You come up against resistance to doing things, um, just the ways in which you're not naturally skilled at something or good or even like and yet you've got to push into some of those areas because I think it's important to be well-rounded, well-read, um, and to, to face, for me anyway, to face the aspects of things that I don't like. I'm such a person that flits about, so taking a year-long course was great, but I would say if you've never done something like that, start small with smaller courses, <laughs> um, which I have done in the past. The biggest skill that I think that I developed this year, because skill is developed, you don't just pick up a skill, you practice and develop a skill. I really developed the skill of grounding into the elements and being very elementally focused in order to understand elemental power this year and to learn how to put that elemental power into my body and into my spell work. Also using elemental power in order to cleanse or protect or fortify or heal. That was a major part of this year for me. I think that natural witchery and just folk magic is amazing. And I'm kind of kind of mesh both of my questions together. Uh, but this next year, one of the things that I really want to do is I really want to grow my ability to tap into the power of the elements and funnel that, like really, really tap into that. So utilizing that power in my spell craft, a lot of my spells are on the fly and I'm totally gonna be doing that, but I think I want to get into growing bigger spells that are more powerful by tapping into elemental powers and learning to Learning to slow down a little bit more in order to get 
bigger results and understand what it takes in order for me to have the capacity because whenever we are channeling power, we need to have the personal capacity to do that. So I want to really be working on growing that capacity through meditation, through journeying, um, and just through holding power. Like I think that we don't talk very much about this in the witchy world, but holding our magic inside and growing something so that it is big enough in order for us to have bigger results. And I talked about this in my five things the trees taught me about spells, about spell work. It is so important for us to learn to hold our magic within, to expand our capacity and really get it to where it is so crackling hot before we release it so that we get you know, incredible results because when we release power, the power of a spell, it's only going to go as far and as wide and permeate the atmosphere around it, us with as much as it can. So if we don't grow the power very much, we just kind of go, you know, it's not going to go very far. It's not going to, it's not going to affect as much change as the spells that we grow inside of ourselves or the magic that we grow inside of ourselves. And we don't necessarily need to work magic through spell work. I think um, it's been interesting. I've been looking at what is magic, you know, what is actually magic? Let me know down below. What do you think the definition of magic is for you? I'm, I'm going to do a whole video on this because I've really been delving into that, what is magic. But one of the big things that I think magic is, is it is conscious, consciously releasing our will in order to affect change. If we are not doing things in order to affect change, I don't think that that's actually magical working. Go ahead, attack me if you want, or just, or disagree, you don't have to attack me. But, um, I feel like it's very important that that will is something that I become more in tune with over this next Samhain to Samhain and so that I can really grow in my ability to affect more powerful change in my environment, not just for myself, but for the world around me. The other thing that's really important to me is empowerment and women's empowerment in particular. And so I'm going to be shifting my classes that I'm teaching online uh, to a lot of women's empowerment. I want us as a community to be able to rise in our power, to understand what our power is, for each one of us to get excited about who we are and understand that we don't have to be like our neighbor or like me, but there is a way for each one of us to tap into that power and to feel really excited about who we are and learn how to release that into the world in a way that feels authentic, comfortable and exciting. And so that is something that I'm shifting my coursework towards is getting all of you excited about who you are and the power you, that you have. And I hope that my videos will begin to sort of reflect these thoughts that I'm having and the ways in which I try to inspire myself to be more authentically me and to release my power through the comfort of that authenticity. One of the lessons that I have learned over this last year is how important focus is for me. I'm a neurospicy witch and I can be all over the place. And I have, I'm 52 years old, I'm about to be 53 here in April. Uh, I, I want to be effectual in my life. I truly want to be, I have a limited amount of time left on this planet to do things and I want what I do to count. And in order for that to happen, I needed to spend this last year really figuring out what I wanted and I needed to commit to that. And a lot of what happened is I came up against a lot of ideas from my childhood, like messages about money and abundance that were holding me back. Messages about what women can and can't do that I didn't even realize were really in there that were just kind of a part of, like I'm Generation X. And I think that we picked up some, just some weird funky stuff from the patriarchy that I had to work through. I had to be very honest that I had ideas that were outdated, that were sort of an undercurrent, that were keeping me from having the focus that I wanted. But the biggest thing is that I needed focus. I needed to not just be following my rainbow. 
I needed to be actually sitting down and getting very honest with myself about what I wanted and work through the blocks that I had and rise up and commit, commit <laughs> to moving forward with that. And so the lesson for the year is focus is key for me. And that I can't move forward, that I'm not gonna achieve the kind of success that I desire if I don't have clear focus. And so, like I said, as someone with ADHD, that's a hard one, like coming up with focus. But even realizing that I have ADHD and choosing to do the things I know to do so that I can be focused and be my best self, like I had to choose that. And that came through refining my focus and getting very honest about how and where I want to be successful in my life because lesson number two is I just can't do it all. I can't do it all and do it really good. <laughs> it's just gonna be kind of halfway. So for me this year has really been about, again, being honest. You know, being honest, there's a there's a mindset out there like that you can't talk about spiritual things and make money at it, like that that's wrong. And that's baloney. Um, I'm happy to give free content here, but I wanna be teaching with groups of people that really wanna go deeper. And I think reciprocation is something that I had to look at. And I had a lot of things, like my dad used to pay me a dime for ironing a shirt perfectly. And this is at a time when a movie was $5.50. So that's, that's a lot of shirts. That's 55 shirts to go to a movie. Like that kind of reciprocity, that is not fair. It is not right. It is not normal. It is not acceptable. But it had really kept me in a poverty mindset that had kept me from really moving into abundance. At the beginning of the year, I picked up a goddess to study for the year, that's Rosmerta, and I would love to do a video on working with deity and choosing a deity and just even her. But she has taught me so much about abundance and my lack mentality and where it's coming from. And so this year, I want to be true to the wisdom. I want to be true to the knowledge about myself that I have picked up and I want to be wise because wisdom is the timely application of knowledge. So I want to this year, I want to be applying everything that I've learned this last year so that I can really groove it so it's a little bit more on autopilot, just like those stories from the past that play out in our minds about lack or poor self-esteem, which I face all the time. You know, I want my new autopilot to be the lessons that I have picked up this last year from the deities that I've worked with and will continue to work with. And also from just sitting down and doing the work. Again, it's that focus and it's that conscious release focus. Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? The conscious direction of my will in the form of the timely application of knowledge, which is wisdom in order to achieve effectual change in my life and in the world around me for the betterment of myself, my family, and the community of people that are the right people to connect with me. So if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably one of those people because we're like 17 minutes in. It has not been easy. This year has been hard. I went to Wales and I had, it was like a pilgrimage for me. I went on a tour, a spiritual sites tour, and I chose not to research anything. I didn't want to know anything about it because I wanted to be present with the land. And so it has taken me, it took me from May when I went until probably mm, August to assimilate what the land taught me and how my ancestral heritage is playing out in my life now. So as I come into this Samhain, I'm gonna be looking forward to really journaling that and putting down exactly those thoughts, trying to channel from my body the lessons that I've learned onto the page through the wisdom of my ancestors and this, you know, this liminal space that I am sharing with the earth 
and my ancestors and my ancestors of spirit, not just blood, but spirit. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to really sitting down and doing that work. And somebody had asked about ideas for like doing personal work with the Book of Shadows. If you guys are interested in ideas for doing personal work, like how I sit down and do this, the different techniques that I use, you know, the different um, questions that I ask, the ways in which I journal. I teach tarot, so you can check out Tarot and Witchery and see how I teach tarot and oracle card reading. I'm also going to be doing a course this next year on reading cards. I have several that are coming out. Uh, so again, get on that mailing list. If you're interested in upping your game and actually studying, I suggest you get on my mailing list. My courses are very affordable, very, very affordable because I want them to be available to the public and I try to make them limited amount of people so that they are intimate so that we can really interact with one another and grow from one another's stories because it's not just my story that you need to hear, but other people's stories, other people's failures and triumphs, other people's insecurities, you know, just the hurdles that we face, sharing in that. It's only through honest dedication to ourselves and doing the work, the great work, that I believe we come into the purest expression that we possibly can and are able to disseminate our magic into the world, pull up the threads that are right for us, and weave into this conscious reality the beauty of who we are so that other people can learn, grow, partake, reflect. Okay, if you made it to the end of this video, then tell me some of your goals for the next year, like maybe something that you want to study maybe something that you want to be doing. I'm gonna be studying, uh, journeying to the other world is my primary focus this next year, to the other worlds, the upper, lower, and middle worlds, and becoming uh, an adept at that. That's something I've done for years, but I am formally studying that at the time. So are you studying something? Do you want to study something? What would you like to learn or grow in? What did you let go of? You know, let's share some of this. Share something that you let go of this year or some way that you've had a personal triumph. Uh, it has not been an easy year for me. It really hasn't. I have not had momentum. I am just now getting into a feeling of having breakthrough and momentum. And it was hard won. Let me tell you, hard won. <laughs> Anyway, it's a great way to end the 13 Nights with Samhain. Thank you for joining me. If you made it all the way to the end, you guys are a superstar. Thanks so much for being my friend here on YouTube and listening to me. And I look forward to getting to know some of you personally. If you're not on my newsletter yet, if you're not signed up for my newsletter yet, please do so. And when you get that welcome email, it's going to ask you about yourself. Please, please write me back and tell me something about yourself. Or you can contact me at hexa at tarot and witchery. And um, hexa at tarotandwitchery.com. That's my email. And let me know something about yourself or something that you'd like to learn on this channel.